Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about Reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three and in this particular video I'm going to talk to you about what can you do with a finance PhD. So if you don't know me, I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship and I created this whole Reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out that I wanted to pay the favor for it and help you out. All right, so many people ask are asking about doing a finance PhD and what you can actually do with a finance PhD. And um, I think the reason is why people are really curious and, you know, a finance PhD or a doctorate in finance or a doctorate in accounting and stuff is because they think that they're going to make a lot of money doing that. And, you know, I personally would argue that that is not the best sort of way to think about this. There's many sort of things in your life that you should be thinking about. I'm not going to discount it. It's really important to think about money and wealth and things like that. But I think that there's many other things that you can do that uh, matter just as much in your life. And uh, you wanna be very, very concerned about that kind of stuff. So um, what I would suggest in terms of a finance PhD and what you're doing, I would look to see what they're actually doing, right? So you'd wanna contact some of these folks and talk to them. But you know, here are some sort of ways or things that people do when they go into uh, you know, a finance um, PhD or they go and get a doctorate in that particular degree. So the first thing is, the vast majority of people that are going to get a finance PhD, um, and this is true of anybody in a business school, um, at least in North America, it's different uh, in, in Europe. There's lots more people that go into industry, but a lot of people in North America will end up going into academia. And so what does that mean? You're going to do research and you're going to be teaching, right? So the most of them are going to be going in doing some sort of academic thing. And the reason is, is that a lot of colleges, a lot of business schools are going to sort of select on those individuals that are wanting to go in into the academic game. And uh, it's just because it's really tough and it's rigorous and there's a lot of investment that's made in those pe um, individuals. And so they want them to do really well going forward. Some people um, will work in a policy or think tank sort of role, but often what that is, they don't go and they don't work at a think tank sort of full time. What they're doing is they're maybe working a little bit at the think tank or maybe they take a summer off and they work at that think tank, you know, things like um, NBER, for example, or, you know, the Brookings Institute and things like that. You know, they would just go and work part time or maybe they have a cross appointment, what's called a cross appointment, where you work, you know, for the most, the, the, the majority of the time at the, the university where you're at. And then you'd go, you know, maybe a week or two at a particular location or a think tank um, and sort of share your ideas with different people that are in policy. And, and that is, that's, um, you know, that not everybody does that, but that is not unusual, but it's usually more senior folks that are doing that kind of stuff, right? So it's somebody that has built a career, they're 25, year, you know, 25 years into the, the career, and they're looking to have, um, you know, policy impact. They actually will go into academia and do the normal route where they become a tenure track um, professor before they actually go into a think tank. That's, that's pretty normal, I think. Um, you know, some people do go and work on Wall Street and some of them do become traders, right? Um, not as many as you think do do that kind of stuff, but there is some people that do go uh, into that and, and there, you know, people are, you know, different companies are asking the PhD graduates to go and work at, at in Wall Street. It does happen. Um, you know, you might be working at things, you know, some different companies like a hedge fund or a private equity firm, um, you know, different things like that, where you would go and you'd be an analyst at the different um, institutions. Sometimes you work for a large bank and you'd be an analyst and, and then you'd quickly move up in the ranks um in in the in the bank you could because you have their sort of requisite background to move up in the, in the bank but you know not everybody is going to and so you know there is some people that do that kind of stuff and and often it is you know you're doing this sort of analytical roles is definitely a lot more technical um so you might think about even doing a technical phd if you want to do that right so doing things like statistics economics um, you know, different sort of math areas. 
if you want to go uh, in, in work in, in a bank and have influence in that way, or you just don't do it and you do an MBA, I'd probably recommend that route. Um, build your skills as an MBA first and then go um, you know, in the bank banking industry and then sort of see whether you can move up or you can go and get some sort of doctorate degree that is a little bit more applied if you want to do that eventually. But um, definitely maybe the MBA route would be better if you're doing that kind of thing. It's going to save you a lot more money. You're going to be making more money much more quicker if that's what your end goal is. So I just recommend that um, rather than doing a doctorate. Now, um, not a lot of people will go and start their own business with a finance PhD. It's just really uncommon. You know, entrepreneurship is not as common as you think it is. What they might do is, you know, and it would still be classified as sort of a business, is they just do a little consulting thing on their side. You know, not a lot of people are going to be doing this kind of stuff, right, where, you know, it's a YouTube thing. Um, it's just super uncommon to do that kind of stuff. It's kind of more like new, new economy sort of things. Um, and you just don't see a lot of people doing it. It's really not profitable in the short term. So I think people are pretty rational that way. Um, and it just takes a long time to get to the point where you actually are profitable with any business that you have. And it's not to say that people don't become profitable. Um, and they don't become successful and they become, you know, they could be a successful trader and things like that on their own. But, you know, there's just many different factors that weigh in. It's easier to do the sort of normal academic route. So if I was you and I was thinking about a finance PhD, you know, or an accounting PhD is, you know, I would just definitely just think of it as as an academic thing that you're doing, that you want to go into, you know, a business school and work in a business school, do research. Um, you know, what is research is basically anything that you're studying something for a long time um, that is related to. So in finance and, um, you know, accounting and stuff, it's going to be related to markets and firms, um, not different, not very different than what people in strategy do. In fact, there are some people that sort of do, you know, multiple um you know, that they, they would publish in both areas, right? So finance or accounting and as well as strategy and stuff. There's not a lot of, um, there is differences, but it is not as big as you think. Um, you know, I'm taking some finance, doctoral level finance courses and stuff myself. So uh, there is, there's overlap with it. Um, it's just finance is a little bit more mathy um, for the most part. And accounting, um, I've never taken an accounting course, so I wouldn't be able to tell you too much about that. But basically, you know, most people are going to be going in that particular direction and doing research. And that is really common, right? So if you're thinking of you want to do a finance PhD to go into a hedge fund or a private equity or something like that, I would recommend instead um, that you don't do that. You just do, you know, a finance specialty MBA. Or if you want, um, you a lot of banks, and this is kind of like an inside tip, right? So a lot of banks and a lot of trading and stuff like that is moving online and it's becoming a lot more technical, right? So the vast majority of trades in, 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 in you know, the world around us is doing, is, is online. It's using computers and machines and algorithms, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I would, if I was you, um, finance is gonna be a little dated with some of that stuff. I would actually go into computer science and do a PhD in computer science and learn some of those skills. Um, maybe it's machine learning, for example, maybe you do AI or something like that. It's not to say you can't do that in finance. Uh, it's just that you're gonna get a bigger, more in depth um, understanding of some of that stuff. And as long as you're doing a project or a thesis that's related to the finance industry. Um, you can, or maybe you do both, right? So maybe you do a bunch of courses in computer science and finance and you sort of create your own program. Um, and then you go and launch your career doing that. And that would be probably a way that I would prefer to do if you're doing that kind of route. Um, and so you can, might wanna look at that, right? So how you can blend those particular things. I think there's a couple of programs that do financial engineering as well. Um, you know, one, I believe the University of Toronto has that where it's in an engineering school and you do like um, finance stuff as well. So you could do some of those things, just be creative with some of it and, and you, can, you can do all sorts of things with it, right? So um, that's what you can do with a finance PhD. There's lots of different options you could, you could do. It's like a, any doctorate in, in a business school. Um, there's many different options, but most people will go into academia um, and, and they'll, they'll end up pursuing that particular route. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, do subscribe to the YouTube channel, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.